Alrighty then. Let me you won't need them where you're going. Smile points at hell. Oh man, that art is sick. Do you want me to change that over right now? No, that's why I was asking. Because either I could show off today or just not. No, 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 no. Save, 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 save. You want me to save it? Save it, yes. Okay. Now it's not the time to use that. I showed it briefly on my stream, though. Oh, well, Some people have seen it. Well. Sorry, it's taking so long. I'm trying to get the last little pieces here. All right, here we go. Bam. I know you guys can see the DM stuff. Here. All right. And thus it begins. I will tell you that this will be fairly short because it's just one player and we're going to cycle through stuff pretty fast. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we'll have, a, we'll have a little bit of time. Uh, one more thing. I got to post this. Here's the third person in the call. Rhythm bot, dude. All right. Here we Get go. your law caps on, chat. It's time. Ost, as you step through the gate, you find yourself walking in, in smoke. A pale incense covers the walls around you, but they are not as akin to law, uh, walls, they are, they are more of a smoky suggestion of solid objects. Your feet seem to find hard enough ground, but when you look down, your feet falls into the floor, almost as if purely the realization that you walk upon smoke causes it to be so. Having some experience with this in the dream, you're able to quickly adjust your thinking and stride ahead to whatever might wait you. Okay, and there's a a, an, a, an, a stone set of armor, did you say? That is time? correct, yep. I'll inspect it. As you walk up towards the stone set of armor, you realize that it's, it's kind of ethereal. It's not real in the sense of that it is actually here. But you also sense that it is, that its existence is not intangible. It's almost like you could reach out and touch it. I'll try to. As you reach out to do so, your hand brushes across the stone, your fingers fall through it and the the entire structure, the mannequin, or the, the stand and the stone armor dissipates into more of the smoke around you it begins to shift and swirl and then you find yourself standing within a stone structure a tower you think although the stone walls are faded and cracked a line of moss uh seeping almost like a like a like blood from a wound down the stone you look down at yourself and you see that you are a visage merely a wisp of smoke in and of yourself but you feel fine before this confusion can be dealt with however a noise in front of you catches your attention two hooded men stand across from one another at a table you do not think that they can notice you even though you're standing right in front of them it begins to dawn upon you that perhaps this is a vision or a memory the two men seem to be in conversation. You cannot hear their words, 
but you can see uh, their reactions to each other. One seems to be upset and is pointing at a map, gesturing wildly. The other is calm and tolerant of the excitable one and calmly points out other places, which seems to soothe the reaction of the excitable one. There is a table with documents and a map on top of it. The rest of the stone tower appears to be inaccessible, save for the door leading out. The two cloaked figures have no discernible symbology. Their robes are brown and simple, possibly, and more probably, uh, distinctly for that purpose, that they are uh, that they are unnoticeable or easy to forget. What do you do? Um, also approach the the vision taking place and see if she can get like a nice close look at their faces. As you move towards the two inconspicuous men, you see that their faces are not ones that you recognize, but they are men. One is a brown-haired older gentleman, the calmer one, and the more excited one, uh, excited one is a black-haired, silver-eyed uh, younger man. Uh, you could you possibly put the older one at 35 to 40 and the younger one at the cusp of manhood. Okay. As you look down at the papers in front of you, you can see that there are several documents written in a calligraphic hand uh, showing quite a lot of presentation for what you would suppose to be a hidden meeting. But what is most telling is the map. For the map, you believe to be of Calcatesh, but the border lines are wrong. The continent looks different. Interesting. Is there a date? You don't see anything that de depicts a date anywhere. But okay. you do notice that on the map there appears to be a mark. A mark that depicts <clears throat> a moment uh, a political boundary that cuts from the Badlands straight down the center of Calcatesh like a wicked gash. You recognize a symbol that you know of the sign of the Ayatonis Imperium the Imperium of the Elves. Interesting. Okay. And I can't... I'm assuming I can't read any of these documents. They're not legible. Well, as you attempt to do so, you can see uh, perfectly fine what is written upon the pages. The information appears to be a series of... 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 of tracked trade agreements. Specifically, it seems to be from innocuous nobles that you don't have any knowledge of. Uh, perhaps minor ones, as you would assume a major noble would survive uh, whatever time this must be. Hmm. Once again, you find no dates upon them, but you do see that some of the letters seem to bear a curious notary. A notary that is depicted of a symbol that you have only seen once before. And that is... In the Red Star of Anareth, when you were studying all the languages and those extra books, you found something that gave homage to the Taladani. Mm. You see that symbol here. The paper that you hold, however, does not appear to be an old vestige of some forgotten library, but rather fresh parchment, recently delivered. A telling sign. Interesting. Okay, and if I try and interact with these things, I'm assuming I kind of, do I phase through the pages almost? The pages, you can't move anything, but you can yeah. read it. As you try to gotcha. read what you can through this strange facsimile of time, the door behind you opens, light spilling into the room, causing a curious reflection off of your smoky form. The silhouette, spin. the silhouette who fills the doorway and walks towards you, bears the resemblance of a dark elf. Mm. You can tell this from his ears that poke through the ragged holes in his hood and from the rest of his visage and his darkened skin. He moves towards the two individuals and begins to speak to them. Once again, you cannot hear the words that they say, but it seems that these two were definitely waiting on this new mysterious third figure. 
And it's clear that they're not dark elves from their complexion. They're not. They are. They are humans. Perhaps, uh, maybe one of them might have a little bit of uh, orcish in them. You think, but you're not quite sure. They are certainly not elves. As the drow stands before them, uh, speaking of various things that you cannot make out, one of them begins to viciously point, and then point at his hand, almost as if. The Dark Elf was suspected to bring something. This demanding from the younger one keeps going, while the older one keeps an eye on the Elf, studying him carefully. The Elf holds up his hands in a quiet, peaceful surrender. Reaching into his pocket, he will pull forth a golden ring with a curious signet. A signet of twelve stars in a circular, uh, in a, in a circular pattern. He will hand the ring to the younger man and then he will point at his hand the other two begin to nod to each other they will hold up their finger to basically ask for one moment and they will start to move through their packs there is a moment where their backs are turned and you notice that the elf moves his fingers in a curious manner. But you are no stranger to spellcasting. He has cast something. But you're not quite sure what. It was very fast and very subtle. Uh, I'd like to try and follow the golden ring at this point. All right, as you move past the elf and towards the golden ring, you can see that it has been placed upon the table. It shines in the light from the open door and it is simply just sitting upon the table. Okay. I'd like to get a closer inspection of this 12 star signet, if I can. As you kind of bend down to look at it, you can see that there appears to be an inscription on it, but you'll have to turn it towards the light somehow in order to read it. Okay. I'll keep an eye on it and wait patiently for them to pick it up perhaps look at themselves all right um go ahead was it look did it look like that this spell was merely a was it like just a, a hand movement or was it it is difficult his lips move it, you did not see his lips move and indeed the subtle gesture of his fingers you're not even quite sure if it was a spell but you sense that it was perhaps a, a additional sight granted to you from your strange form and walked pattern the two will finish their argument of whatever it is, and one of them will pull forth a small pouch and will place it upon the table. The younger one uh, will accidentally knock the ring from the table, and it will bounce across the ground. And there, you will see that its uh, inscription is pointed towards the light, but you will need to change position. Yeah, Ast will follow the ring and press her face to the stone floor. Right, right. down, try and inspect the inscription. As you do so, you move underneath the Dark Elf as he moves towards the ring to pick it up. And there you see his face. As you look up towards him, as more of a reflex than anything, you will see that his eyes shine with violet light as he reaches out towards the ring. Whew. The eyes will then turn to look at you. They will quickly shift back to the ring, and he will pick it up. Did I manage to catch the inscription? You did. And it says, Never forget your duty, my son. Interesting. Okay. Austin dust herself off and rise to her feet inspect the elf curiously to see if he looks at her again even enter his field of vision to see what happens you can see that the two men start to discuss things and the elf turns to leave but as he turns he will stop his eyes will look directly at you he will smile and leave the smoke fades from the room as the memory vision, whatever it is, 
fades away. Us loosens her grip on her songblade that she'd grabbed in reflex when he looked her a second time. Is the room back to how it was? The room is yet a shadowy, uh, a shadowy, smoky area, yes. However, now there is one thing that is in the room, and that is a mirror. Okay. Us will approach the mirror and look into it. Bravely, you approach the, the strange mirror in the center of the smoke-filled room. You gaze upon its reflective surface, seeing yourself. An odd thing for a changeling to look in the mirror, something that is oftentimes considered taboo for them to do so. More of a superstition thing. But gaze you do, and you see that the mirror shows you, but not as you are. It shows you as what you once were. Your black silken clothes and heavy leather boots, your cocksure attitude, a bow and arrows across your back. How far you have come from a, a simple thrill seeker and sword for hire. Curious by this, Ast will stare at her hand touching the mirror as it shifts. I'm gonna take the form of the Dark Elf I saw. As you move your hand towards the mirror, you take the form of the Dark Elf. And there, you see a black shadow. Just a black shadow? Yep. Okay. I was hoping it might reveal his his past. She'll drop the visage. In a panic, you realize you cannot. Your power no longer at your command. You look down at your hand and you see that they are shadowy black. the mirror begins to crack. The black shadow moves out from it and begins to slowly manifest. Us will take a few steps back and let it manifest. Okay. Oh boy. moment please as it fully manifests you realize that your form returns to what it should be and standing before you is someone else someone whose whose form is solidified but somehow um how can I describe this? Almost as if if he were a painting, the ink upon the outlines would be faded and runny, if you understand what mm. I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And furthermore, it seems that the individual is 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 um, having difficulty maintaining this form of whatever it is. But eventually... One moment. Uh, eventually, he will form. And oh boy, here we go. One moment. Gonna do this. There we go. Gotta hide this and there 
Oh shit. So, it is upon us then. You have delved into shadows, interloper. Shadows that some believe best forgotten. What is your name? Made... Asked. And I made a lot of mistakes in the last hour or so. Hmm. The trouble with mistakes is that history often repeats itself. But I digress. What we have to speak of is important. And there is little time that I yet still have. First, please offer me your hand. It would be faster for me to know what you know. I'm a changeling, I don't know if that's wise. Indeed, it would be more perilous, but not something that I cannot handle. I'll still squint, take her hand off the hill of the sword, step forward and hold out her palm. He will take your palm uh, like a like a palm reader and will trace his, uh, his, his middle finger from the tip of your middle finger up towards the center of your hand. He will press lightly and there is sort of a rippling effect through your entire body. And then as quickly as it began, it ended. I see. She'll stagger back. Some of the pieces you have already found, but yet still some remain hidden. You are courageous to attempt to claim the realm of the Mad Wizard. Indeed, one of my shards is located here. I don't know how much of it's left. She'll fold her arms. Hmm. I can assure you there is still plenty more. Tell me, you know that there is a weapon against the enemy. Do you know what it is? The traitor's blade. One of these. She'll hold up the song blade. A weapon that is of the enemy, yes, but not against it. That is not what awaits you at the end of the labyrinth. She looks confused. Tell me, what is it that you know of the Violet? I have seen your mind, but now I wish to explore your intuition. I'm, I'm asking Strippin. All right. Um... It is one of the original seven mm -hmm. from a different time. Mm -hmm. A hobbit. Halfling, sorry. Um, who betrayed the others. <laughs> hobbit. A halfling who betrayed the others is not of this world, doesn't belong here, That's kind of it. That's my gist. Hmm, I see. Well, you're correct in most parts. The form of the vessel at the beginning is not important. What is important is what that vessel became, or more importantly, what that vessel contained and what it became. What awaits you, the 15 or so of you, at the end of your respective labyrinth, are keys. Keys that will open the final door of the mad wizard's realm. When you open it, inside you will find the point in which reality was sundered. 
the crack in the prism. And where, and where the end might begin. For there is a place far from this realm that cannot be reached, not by traditional means. It is through that crack in the prism that you may yet walk towards the Twilight Station. But with it, you will walk through the prism, and there you may yet gain the knowledge needed to face the enemy. Do you know how the Covenant of Mercy broke? I do not. There are many theories, but they are just that. Theories. However, that is a question that you may answer when you walk through the edge of reality. For the prism that you shall venture towards is not of this world. It is a case, a casing around it. One that is cracked and fading, but it is not of this place. There are those that venture within our realm that come not from another realm plane of existence, but another existence entirely. They walk outside of the great wheel, and they are but seven. The one- I've met two already. I know, but now you will know what they are. And now I will need to reveal to you another piece of the puzzle that you do not know. The Violet had its purpose just as they did. Its covenant was destroyed. These are things you know. But there is a reason that the others were sealed. There is a reason the other colors were kept from the world. There was a reason my order saw that they were never discovered. Because they have the capacity to go down this path too? That is one concern. What and how they are is something that is yet to be fully translated. But the purpose of the Cardinals was to keep them hidden. The truth of the prison. Hidden. So you must know where they are, right? I know where we sealed them, but you say you have met some, meaning that they have been freed. There are Well, we found one in the Mad Wizard's Labyrinth. Yes. The green, I believe. What you well, must... should I keep waking him up or not? The time for that decision has long since passed. They are awake. What has started cannot be stopped. But perhaps 
it is for the best. For six chances did this world have, bearing its weight upon the prism. And the seventh is but doom and death. You were the first? No. The first was the violet. So you were the second? No. I am the third. Well, how'd you fail? I loved my father too much. It does not matter. My time is done. My iteration is closed. The great wheel shall continue to turn. And you have little time. For Tyr has done all that he can. Are you ready to learn what it is to be a traitor? Astor looked down at the sword. Back of Ventil. I've come this far. We all have. Then listen well. Once, the world was different. So very different. Nailed it. Give me a second. Brief clap, brief intermission clap. Sorry, I got a music change for this one. Stop apologizing. I'll fight you. Sometimes you just got to hit him with the... That... That heavy lore. That dank lore. Tummy's full. So he was the third. Yep. Oh God, I can't remember the name of it. Um. Oh God, how could I forget? I I guess I got nervous and I fucking forgot what it was. Hold on, give me a second. I gotta remember it. It was... God, I can't remember which one it was. Is it this one? No, that's not it. It was... This one? Yeah, this is it. Okay, cool.
All right. And so, we begin. Once the prism was complete and there was harmony. The world was not perfect, as any diamond has its flaws. But there was hope. There was happiness and prosperity. It would seem, however, that such things are not to be forever. For some reason, unbeknownst to myself, and of any lore or word or mind that I have explored, the circle became the tear, the prism broken, the violet a traitor, a covenant broken. A wound gaping from one existence into another. Through time, the violet has scoured the realms of the peaceful peoples of this world and all worlds within the swirling grasp of the wheel. And each time, it takes a little more. Each time, it has been slowed, but never stopped, never destroyed. There are those that fell victim to its temptations. The first traitor sought the power for his people, sought to keep them safe against the great war across the Astral Sea. But the first traitor failed. He had thought that his power was his own. But he was wrong. And thus the folly of Maltos would soon become the paradigm and which each traitor followed. Each time a traitor calls, each time it happens, Each time an attempt is made to be different from the others, but through their travels and through their trials, it always ends the same. A little bit more of the world is gone, a little more knowledge and memory lost, and it resets. Each time the world grows weaker, and the violet grows stronger, so why are you sure this time it will be different? <laughs> I am sure of nothing. But that is the purpose of hope. For what are we to do if not believe that it will be? That it can be? That it should be? That is the driving force that has kept it from its complete victory. There is something different about this revolution, this 
turning of the wheel, this iteration. For each time, each iteration produced those that knew of the violent, and they have laid their plans in the midst of shadow and subtlety. Even now my cardinals yet still teach and prepare one another. His translators seek to show the path. The seven hold their flame for the torches to be born anew. Each one makes its path. The violet is not omnipotent, nor is it omniscient. It would be a mistake to believe that its victory with each reset is complete. But it is also equally as foolish to believe that we are anywhere close to winning. But perhaps there is hope. For the colors have returned. And although this will merely exacerbate the problem, the prism will grow bright and full with colored light. And with it, so shall the violet. But perhaps, perhaps it is enough. Perhaps. Perhaps this herald shall be faced with heralds of their own. Astral look at her hands. You know, before this journey, this world wasn't kind to me or my sisters. Honestly, I wouldn't have helped it. Better it ends, I thought. But then I went on this journey and I just had a glimpse of everything that creates this world and my comrades I don't even know where they are I hope they're okay I think I felt love but it changed my mind and I want to save it who is she talking about? Mental will nod. Hmm. Hope is not so easily extinguished. That is what my father used to say. Each time that I would fall. In either case, there is a gift that has waited here for those strong enough to claim it. Normally there would be a trial for such a thing, but I grow weary of tests. And he will hand you a shard of oblivion. Listen well. See that this does not touch your hands, nor the hands of those that are not already burdened with such strength. You will need this in what is to come, for your friends are lost. You will need to retrieve them. Ask reluctantly takes the shot. Uh, is it wrapped? It is. Okay. She makes sure it is securely wrapped. The uh, her previous deed still fresh in her mind. Gento will kind of his eyes will sparkle and he will say, <laughs> "Do not fear your action. There are many that might believe such a thing foolish, but it is as you said." What will make this time different? That is something I cannot truly answer. But fear is the mind killer. 
Fear is stagnation. Fear is a weapon of the enemy. A risk she was pops taken. She chest out when he says this. Good. It is time that you return to your friends. I can muster such power. One last time. How do we... How do we get a traitor of our own? <laughs> there is no need. For there already is one. And with that... Mental's hands move toward, move together and swirl with violet light as his eyes brighten. One last time, I will use this burdensome gift. One last time, I shall gaze through the prism. One last time, I offer these words. Before your body is broken, before your mind is shattered, before your spirit is sundered, never forget that hope burns within us all, even the enemy you face. Ost is turned to smoke and shifted through the violet mirror. It is done then. Now it falls to all of you. It comes for us all. Be wary. Be ready. Clap. Clap. All right, there you go. That's like about an hour. Nice. Yeah, that was great. Nice. All right, so now you'll have a delayed join of the other one, so you might have to miss the first session, but... Yeah, that works for me, dude. Sounds good. Clap those cheeks. Boop. Oh, man. Ugh. No shadow of tear, though, chat room. Unfortunately, Kraken was unable to get his uh, flight changed. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Alrighty. Well, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my night. Oh, there's fan art. Hold on. Apparently, there is fan art. Wow. We can show chat the new thing, too. Okay. Well, let's start with that, then. It is very sick nasty. Oh, man, look at that, Aust. The mirrored scale mill. Mm. Oh, man, it's so sick. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. This was done by my friend Carla Draws on Twitch. Meep, meep. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Holy fuck. 
Bro. Wow. <laughs> That's so good. Dude. Ooh, watercolors. I think. Time to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> oh, shit. That is a nice ass. Damn, Tony. That is also a nice ost. Look at that toot. Ah, oh, my boy. Yeah. Okay, L. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> what? How? What? We've only been here an hour, dude. <laughs> That is magnificent. Oh, yeah. Goddamn L. Why won't you die? Hokoli, Dokoli. Uh, there's also something else. Um, Burgenar sent me a new update to the video. A little update on the progress of the animation. Who wants to uh, get a little sneaky peeky? You guys want to get a little sneaky peeky, maybe? Yeah. I don't think it has sound, but let's see what it looks like. Yeah, here we go. Oh, shit. Holy shit. Oh, dude. Dude. Dude, it's only been a fucking week, bro. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Holy fuck, that's so good. That is... That is pog you, dude. <laughs> that is so sick. It's so sick. I don't even know what to say, dude. This. Good shit, Birdnar. Especially when you consider how the rest of that scene fucking goes. Like, 